Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a new announcement that Spectrum has made. Spectrum just announced their flagship model and their flagship model is one that replaces their long-awaited flagship model that got discontinued many years ago. The radio announcement that Spectrum is making is for their new IXSR. This is a six channel radio that uses the Android system within it to help control the functionality and features that are included with this radio. And they made a bunch of different improvements to the ergonomics and the mechanical ability to make sure that your controls that you input into the radio are recorded precisely. Now why this launch is special is because it's really replacing a flagship model that was lost years ago. And the model was the DX6R. And the DX6R was a model that also used an Android based operating system. This radio did have a bunch of issues and concerns from users who were using that specific radio. And those really fell along the lines of both speed as well as the bugs within the software that they were using. Now Spectrum was pretty quick at releasing updates to help out those bugs but I think what happened here was the damage was done and before you know it this radio was discontinued. Now why that's important is because I've owned an iX12 as well as an iX14 and both of these models use an Android based system. The iX12 was definitely really slow sluggish. It had its couple bugs when the radio first came out. However the iX 14 absolutely blows this radio away and what I'm expecting is and we'll see it here shortly what Spectrum has been able to do with the success and the performance that they see on their new radios as it relates to the new IXSR that we're talking about here. Now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to jump into the main web page and look at the features that Spectrum is really pushing to everyone on that page. Can this radio be used by speed run guys? Well, let's jump right into that. Here we are, we're on the Spectrum website and this specifically is the IXSR web page. We know that this is a six channel radio and it does use Spectrum's old DSMR technology. It's a surface transmitter as we know, it does come with the SR515 receiver. Now this does sell as a set for $700, but if you end up buying it now, you can get a free foam pit mat. Now we're gonna talk about that price very shortly. Let's now jump into some of the features that they're talking about here on this webpage. Now these are the ones that they're promoting and especially the ones that are right here at the top. Out of the box, smart connectivity. Now they do show the electronic speed control batteries there. And really what this means is all these components integrate with one another so that you're able to see telemetry data for the components that are pulling that specific data. You can see that right on the transmitter and it's got a nice telemetry part within it on the radio where you can go in, you can program specific settings and show graphs and show specific things in areas that you have as a preference. Next item here is ultra smooth and precise steering and throttle mechanism and they do this through the ergonomic feel that you get as well as new introduced hall effect sensors. Now that is talked more in the video here below. You can go right on the Spectrum website and watch this video if you wanna go through that. I'm gonna be going to specific spots within the video just to show exactly what they've talked about, but we're not gonna be watching the entire thing here. The next thing that they're promoting here is the fast Android powered touchscreen interface. Now I do like the Android powered touchscreen interfaces on these types of radios. I am very experienced with this in the air world where I have the iX14 and this is just my preference. I know it's not for everybody, but if you know how to use a cell phone, you're gonna find that it's quite simple to use these types of radios because they operate very similarly in terms of the functionality and how you make adjustments on them. We have a high resolution color display and this specific menu that this picture has been taken from is actually a screen where you can select the color here and this color that you select is displayed as part of the light bar that you see here on the side of the radio. You got one on the right hand side, you got another light bar there on the other side that we can't see. 
and we see that it talks about the high resolution that you get from this screen. So that's good to have for sure on a radio of this caliber. Now we got launch control mode for drag racing. I like how they say drag racing, but I'm a little disappointed that they don't include speed run guys. I hope that there is enough of this specific mode that allows us to get something out of this radio. And we're gonna go and dive into the manual so we can see specific details about that feature within this radio. We got programming vibe alerts. So this means you, you can essentially program a bunch of alerts and there's a menu that you can essentially do that from. We got advanced programmability. All radios of this caliber should have advanced programmability where you can do more than just adjust servo specific items. We got the convenience of having Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a USB connectivity right on the radio. And what I do like about this specific radio is that it can access Wi-Fi. What makes this unique is that you're able to go and have updates that essentially happen very, very quickly. You can go into the Play Store there on the Android system and access the app that you use. Check to make sure you got the latest version. All of this happens really quickly. And if you need the latest version, it's very easy and quick to update as well and I really do prefer that as opposed to some of the other radios that I have owned and have to update in using different methods. I can assure you that this method is by far the easiest and most convenient and it's the quickest as well in order to get those updates done. So the next thing that ta they talk about is 250 model memory. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comment section below. How much model memory do you actually need? 250 models sounds insane to me. I probably would only use about 10 to 15 at most for maybe 10 to 15 vehicles at most. But maybe there's guys out there that have, you know, a lot more than that, upwards of the 250 model area. Now the LED lights, we'd already talked about, it shows them there, and they got advanced control programming, which kind of ties into what they already talked about for advanced programmability. I don't know what the difference is between them here when you got advanced programmability and advanced control programming. So this probably just specifically goes into their technology of MS6X and the AVC technology that Spectrum's had for quite a while built into their receivers. Now I do want to play the video here and dial into some specific spots within this video. So we're going to skip forward. Now there's a couple things that I want to bring to your attention. And the first one is that it does talk about this specific radio and how it's designed to you know, suit those that are bashing, boating, crawling, and racing. Now that's important because you can see kind of the market that this radio is geared towards. It's geared towards those that are operating this specific radio for bashing, for rock crawling, the off-road scene. They don't really talk too much specifically about the on-road scene, and I'm really looking at speed run. I want a radio out there that can handle what we need for the speed run guys. So let's continue and look at what else they're talking about here. So over the last two or three years, the team has gone through five different radio our visions of both mechanical and electrical components. We did this after countless hours and days and weeks of testing, developing brand new Hall effect sensors, which has never actually been used in surface radios. And this is what they are achieving in order to get what they described up here as part of the ultra smooth and precise steering and throttle mechanism. Those Hall effect sensors help get that smooth and precise steering and throttle control. So it's good to see that they're developing this and they, you know, push and, you know, make sure you know that it's taken them quite a bit of time to achieve the results that they were looking for. And they also mentioned here that it's very important and back in 2022, they had 3D versions of the radio being printed and what they would do is they'd show their teams, their racing teams and others, because they wanted to get the experience from those that are using these 3D printed models and see exactly what they thought of the ergonomics of the radio. So it's good to see that they're reaching out to others to find out how good is their design. I like to see you know companies that are doing that. I think that's really good engineering practice to make sure you're designing something for the end user, getting their feedback, listening to them. That's how companies become successful uh, from my perspective. So I'll skip forward here because there's another section that I want to get to and that is specifically 
these types of radios that they're talking about right here. The iX20 is displayed. This here is the iX14. This is important because what they're essentially saying here is that they utilize these radios and all of the learnings that they got through the development of it. The iX12 was not that perfect of a radio. In fact, it had a lot of flaws with it. It was still a good radio, but when they came out the iX14, it was just way better than the iX12 in so many different ways. I have the iX14 and I really enjoy using that type of radio and that's why I'm really looking forward to seeing what this iXSR radio can do. And what they've now essentially are telling us here and they're making a big point of it and I think that is because of what happened with the DX6R. This radio now has technology technology that has proven itself in other radios in the air world, in the airplane world, helicopter world, where this technology is working. And here's a spot in the video where it talks about the included Spectrum SR515 5 channel sport receiver. And what's unique here is it says that you'll get unmatched range. Now I really tried to look deep into what exists out there to talk about the range. In order to get unmatched range, it's gonna to have to have quite a bit of range. Now we're gonna kind of sum this together along with the price and other things that we talked about because I don't know what to expect with the iXSR, but I really hope that it can compete against some of the cheaper radios, the inexpensive radios that are performing really well. You know, half a kilometer of range these are capable of doing. Here's the manual. You can go ahead, download your own copy. All you need to do is go into the spot where it talks about the support for this specific radio, manuals and support, and you can download it right from here. Now, right away, what I wanna do is I wanna jump to the specific spot where we have the, the, the acceleration delay, launch control. So let's go and look up launch control. So launch control here, if we get to the specific spot here, Basic operations, this is not it yet. So launch control, this is what we're looking for. Now there's different options that we have. We have a start button. So if you wanna initiate this launch control, you can actually put a command in here. That's kind of unique and different to what I know. Cause now when I have that on my current radio, what happens is it's always applied. I don't have the option of actually disabling that unless I go through the menus and, and that sort of thing, at least you know from what I understand now. So it's cool to see this type of thing. They got a boost button. I'd imagine that what this does is you can actually add a power to your launch control. So for example, if you have, let's say a ridiculous time, like infinite time or whatever the max is here on your delay, your throttle is gonna be delayed. But if you're looking for just a small bump, this is what that boost control, that boost button is going to help out with. Curve selector, I think this is pretty straightforward. You can get your specific curve and you got a whole bunch of different options here. What I really wanna know is what is the maximum amount of time. So here's boost, boost is a push button trigger when the press adds this percentage of throttle to the output and there's the range zero to 25 percent you're going to get a bump there so that's kind of cool how that you got that extra thing now duration right away this pops right up select the total duration time of the launch control sequence up to five seconds now five seconds it does sound like a lot and it is a lot for bashers or for those that have radio controlled boats and and other types of radio controlled vehicles like drag cars as well. But five seconds for top speed run guys, that is kind of low. The guys who are really pushing well beyond the 120 miles per hour would like to see something probably closer to a minimum of six seconds for the maximum value that this radio would be able to offer. So that is a little bit weak when it comes to the speed run guys. I wonder if that can be updated in some form of update within the software because something like this is just only software based. This radio has a ton of features and functionality. We simply don't have the time to go through all of the unique features and functionality that this radio specifically has. Here's a chart that represents a bunch of radios. I know that there are other radios that can easily be compared against the iXSR. However, these are ones that I just selected because some of the information was easy and I'm a little bit familiar with all these radios and how they compare. So the Spectrum iXSR is priced at $700 where most radios are anywhere between $150 to the $800 mark. So the Spectrum iXSR is definitely priced at a significant amount. And I have to say that the one of the biggest complaints that I got in a previous video that I 
I did with the iX14 was the price point of the radio. At the price point that these Spectrum radios are selling at, they need to be able to compete against the top dollar value radios. Otherwise, the only people that are gonna be buying these are people like me that are loyal to the Spectrum brand and wanna use the Spectrum because we believe that it's a good name. But for most people, that's not good enough. They want to have the value there. So that's my personal opinion on price point. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with that. Channels, this is one of the areas where you know Spectrum can be looked at as a little weak in this area, being only six channels where the Radiolink RC8X that I currently use as my number one radio in RC Surface models right now has eight channels at a price point of something much lower than that of the Spectrum IXSR. Radio Master at 16, I think they can actually expand out to 32 or something wild. I don't even use 16 right now on a jet turbine model. A Sanwa has four channels The for the M17. I think it is four channels on this. This is correct. And the Futaba 10PX, of course, having 10 channels there for that specific model. Now, when it comes to range, ranges are very, very important for many of us. The Spectrum DX6R was somewhere around a two out of five star, where the Radio Link and the Radio Master MT12, both of these are claiming over 500 meters. I know the Radio Link RC8X is 600 meters capability. I myself have tested a previous model, another model that uses the same technology of Radiolink, and that easily achieved over 400 meters. I believe I got it up to 500 meters, and you could still have control at that at that range, which is wild. That's quite a bit of control there at a, at a significant range. And the Sanwa had three stars. Futaba had three stars there. Now screen size, I didn't find a lot of information for the DX6R or the MT12. This may not actually include like a color screen comparable to an IXSR. Nonetheless, the screen size of the IXR is the largest in this category of these radios being shown here. The frame rates, this is, you know, you can, you can link this into latency and the spectrum based off of the DSMR technology has the five and a half milliseconds where the Sanwa was shown one millisecond, Radio Link at three, Radio Master 12, and Futaba 6.8. Now, what I did find interesting about the Spectrum IXSR, we know that it has that big 10 plus amp hour battery pack inside of it. And I think that is one of the reasons why it's driving the weight up. Although it is not fully clear whether the weight of this 700 grams is equally comparable against other values because the Radio Link RC8X at 480 grams may not actually contain, you know, a large battery or any battery at all. It's hard to tell if that specification that I read actually contains it. And I think there's even another spot where I saw that the radio comes in at a lighter weight than that. But if you are somewhere around the 500 gram mark, that is generally what a radio will weigh in at and 700 grams is definitely on the heavier side. Let me know in the comment section below if this radio is well priced at $700 for the features and functionality that you get with this radio. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.